Hey, 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 time for another out of this world story from our space. The worst week of my life. I've, male 29, been with my fiance, female 28, for just over nine years now. And we've got a five-year-old daughter together. We were supposed to get married in October of last year, but I ended up canceling the wedding after a huge fight about her spending money that we didn't have. We stayed together after that. I felt immense guilt, and she felt immense pain and shame. The last year with COVID has been rough. She lost her job as a result of the pandemic. And as the main caregiver of our child, my own work took a huge hit without access to childcare. She got a new job back in September of last year, worked at home from January through March, and then returned to her office of her new place. Things feel off. Intimacy has dried up. She's always on her phone when she's here, and she's not very pleasant to be around. She says her hormones are whack, they are, and she just needs time to unwind after work. So I don't push too hard, and I try my best to get on with it. I'm worried of what's going on in our relationship. I assume it's related still to bad feelings over the wedding, but I don't for a second think that she's being unfaithful. Huh? My daughter turned five a couple of weeks back. Shortly beforehand, I was reminiscing and looking through old photos, videos of her from my phone, Google Photos. My barter's Google account is logged in, and I begin to look at the photos she's taken as well. There, was when a picture of Toad in the hole and another of my daughter, I find a set of nude photos. She's never sent me a nude photo before, and so alarm bells are immediately ringing. I find another set of her and lingerie from February. I confront her about it, and she explains that her girlfriends had recommended she take some to build her self-esteem and to spice up our relationship, but she had decided against sending to me because she didn't like the way they looked. One set was taken just before Valentine's Day, and the other just before our anniversary, so I think I believe what she says, but there is this awful doubt sitting in my stomach. She's her spending an awful lot of time at the office, getting in an hour early and frequently staying late. My doubts are eating at me, and while browsing the subreddit and others, I discover Google location timeline. She's still logged in on my PC, and so I look at where she's been. Often when she says she's staying late at the office, the timeline shows her leaving on time and going to a location nearby for an hour or so, and then coming home. At this point, I assume the worst. I cross-reference all the time she said she stayed late and the GPS data, and find about 10 occasions in the last few months where she's not where she says she is. I don't confront her yet. Last Thursday, again she claims to have stayed late at work for a meeting, but the GPS data has her at the same location nearby afterwards. The next day, after we put our daughter to bed, she gets in the shower and I do the naughty and snoop through her phone. I check the messages from one of her co-workers and I'm utterly distraught. I find sexually explicit texts between the two, talk about out of hours fun time, her getting lifts back with him without my knowledge. I'm seeing red and confront her immediately. She tells me the sexual texts are just banter, that that's the environment in the office and she wanted to fit in. I don't believe her and reveal that she'd been lying to me about when she leaves work and where she's going, which she denies even if I show her the information, claims that it's not right. She says in hysterics at this point and she's begging me to let her explain everything and so I let her. She tells me that after she returned to work after working from home, she was struggling to adjust. The workload had increased and she was stressing out big time. One day in March, she had what sounds like a panic attack at the office, which she had never told me about. She was ashamed and embarrassed about it for some reason. One of her old friends hears about the incident and comes to her and says that her sister is in the process of starting up an online therapy business, and if she wanted to talk to someone then, she could do it for free and exchange for testimonials when they launched. This is what she says she's been doing after work when the location data doesn't add up. Now I struggle to believe what she's saying and don't quite know how it links back to sexual texts with her co-worker. So she tells me that the co-worker came to her afterwards and told her she needs to de-stress via fantasy. He and one of her bosses start to make sexual jokes about her, which she apparently tolerates and eventually joins in with. Then, he started to send messages to her in the same manner, and she responds the same. She then claims that about a month ago, it escalated, and while she was in the kitchen, the co-worker slapped her backside and she freaked out at him. She told some of the other women there about it, who told her to report it to the big boss, and she did so the next day. The co-worker got shouted at, and their relationship apparently frosted over. I remember around this time that my fiancé had mentioned that the co-worker had become insufferable to her because he had been doing badly and was on the verge of losing his job, obviously missing out some crucial details. Since that point, 
There weren't any sexual messages on her phone, but had got a ride back with him. She's apologizing a bunch and saying that her mind wasn't right and she thought I'd blame her for it for some reason. I told her that I'd never think that if the interactions were one way, but they weren't. Anyway, I'm not buying it particularly. I tell her it's over to leave me alone and in the morning I take my daughter and go to my parents for the day. That evening, I falter. I talk the situation over with my sister and she suggests that individually each thing could be plausible but the whole situation is shady, which it is. I go back home later that night, and after the little one was put to bed, we have a much calmer conversation about it all. I get her to admit that she enjoyed the attention at first as a boost to her self-esteem, that at the very least she was dishonest and incredibly inappropriate with another man, but also that I understood that the relationship was heavily strained. Things are looking okay. I tell her I'm willing to get couples counseling and try to forgive her behavior. She agrees that she wants to stay together, but then she says she wants to take it at her own pace, that she doesn't want to rush back to acting as if everything's okay when it isn't. She also claimed that she's not sure that I would forgive her. I'm unsure what that means. I'm confused. Why am I pushing for it if she won't? I ask her to show me a shred of proof of these online therapy sessions. She can't. After some intrusive thoughts in my head, we frost over again and don't talk much the next day. I tell her that she has to seek the solution. It's on her to rebuild the trust that she broke then we can work on the relationship's deeper issues. She says it's just a lot and we both need time to process our feelings. She started to get annoyed and defensive at answering my questions about what's been going on. When she next returned home from work, she tells me that she's got work to do tonight. So after bedtime, she gets her laptop out and starts typing away. I'm angry. I ask her what she thinks she's doing. Why when her family is balancing on a night's edge, she wouldn't use the couple of hours we have together to talk it out more. She reluctantly agrees. She's incredibly deflective, claims that I'm pushing her too hard on it, that I'm not considering her feelings, and that since on D-Day I told her that we were no longer together, that we weren't together at that point. So I told her if that's the case, then she can leave. She says she won't, and so I say if she doesn't, I'll take my name off the contract, we ret, and she pays her own way. More hysterics, four accusations of my awfulness, but ultimately, she gives in and goes to her mother's to stay. She's there now while I'm with the little one. I'm utterly crushed right now and not sure that reconciliation is possible, or even if I want it. Her story just seems like utter nonsense. I can't get my head around it all, around what's true. I don't know if she had an emotional affair, a full-on affair, or none of the above, as she's just actually struggling and has been keeping it from me. Either way, she's not here now, and I'm struggling to hold everything together. Thanks for reading. Our first comment comes from Krahog, 1945. After reading and rereading, for a story I have now found my new definition for unmitigated horse crap. She's got an absolute emotional affair and highly probable physical affair going on with a guy at her office. Protect yourself financially, get a lawyer to hammer out an acceptable co-parenting and custody agreement, and let your fiancé know that you have nothing to say to her until or unless she comes fully clean on the specifics of her affairs. Sorry, buddy. DOP responds back, she'll never admit to more than what she's already said I feel. Thanks. A next comment from Historically Broken. They usually don't, unfortunately, but your gut is probably right and honestly, I have found that whatever your worst case scenario is, double it. We tend to tone down what we think they did. So get yourself that lawyer and start planning a new life and dreaming new dreams. Make it your top priority and detach from any feelings you have for her ASAP. It will help you in the long run because she is clearly going to do the bare minimum as she tries it all. Then, three, five, ten years from now, you will regret every second you tried to make it work. Take this as your warning from someone who tried with an unrepentant cheater. Sapa 2 NYC chimed in. You canceled the wedding for a reason. Take the hint from the universe. She isn't the one. Seriously, see a lawyer about shared custody. She's trickle shooting and minimizing things. At the very least, she had an emotional affair which is probably still ongoing, hence her wanting to take things at her own pace. At worst, it's a full-on physical affair. True, you may never get the full truth from her, so make your decision based on the proof you have. Keep digging. There are so many holes in her story it isn't funny. I'm sure you will find even more solid evidence. Good luck. 
Bowser 1954 chimes in. You have to give her creativity points. That's quite the convoluted tale. Follow up meeting with a therapist tomorrow, and if that gets derailed, get a price for a polygraph test. If she's making all this up, she'll refuse both. OP's report. The therapy sessions were done online at her friend's place, who I've since learned does live where the location data had her, so there's no meeting them. Asked for any proof of it all, and she says that it was off the books, so no. Not thought of polygraph test. Are they available? Sapa2NYC chimes back in again. I don't understand. Is this friend a therapist? Even if the sessions were off the books, why are they being conducted on her friend's laptop? Does your girlfriend not own a laptop? Has she given the name of the online service and the name of the therapist who's not charging her? I think you know in your gut that this story is sketchy as F. You are her boyfriend? If she didn't confide in you about her experience at a new job? The sexting and photos alone should tell you something is going on. Either she's banging the female co-worker at her place, or banging a male co-worker at this friend's place. OP's response? The friend is the sister of one of the people who's trying to start up whatever this therapy thing is. My girlfriend does have a laptop that she takes to work, and I did ask her about that. She says she doesn't know the name of the service, and claims a the therapist changes weekly. Sapa 2 NYC has another say. Wow. Just wow. Let me get this straight. She doesn't know the name of the All Mind Service, a therapy startup that she supposedly has used many times. Okay. Why hasn't she used your laptop again? Even with online therapy, you don't change therapists each time you log on. In therapy in general, you find a therapist you like and stick with them, or else you would be starting from square one at each therapy session, which is counterproductive. Dude, you know what's up. Consider yourself lucky that you didn't get married. Please consult with a lawyer regarding custody of your daughter. You guys can amicably co-parent, but I think you know that the relationship is done. I recommend that you use a co-parenting app. Best of luck to you.